One hundred years ago, in 1913, Texas Senator Morris Shepard from Texarkana first agitated for nationwide prohibition. At that moment, there had never before been a Western nation that had enforced the prohibition of alcohol. For the United States, this feat was attained from 1920 to 1933 under the aegis of the 18th Amendment to the Constitution, which Shepard wrote and introduced to Congress. This is his story, the forgotten drama of a man who believed he could remake the United States and who was praised by Georgia Congressman William Upshaw as a comrade of the immortals. Oh God, you brought me here to Yale. Grant me courage. Help me to bring your righteousness to this world. How is it that our esteemed southern friend has given up coffee, tea, tobacco, and now even alcohol? I remember what the alcohol demon can do. When I was younger, in the town near where I was born, Mount Pleasant, Texas, I saw a drunken card-playing farmer grab a merchant by the beard, and the merchant screamed and pulled himself free. At the time, the town had these thick wooden planks for sidewalks. The merchant dropped underneath him, and the farmer started shooting at him over and over. He, shots rang out, and he even reloaded in his drunken rage. Uh, the farmer dodged underneath and got, finally got to a place where there was a hole. The farmer found him, and he killed him like a rat. He'd been a friend. How oh, thanks. John Barleycorn, the great enemy of our republic, made this man into an alcoholized degenerate. Morris, are you preaching again? Yeah, now we've heard it. Uh, born again, southern evangelical, meets lawless Texas, and now we've got this zealot to deal with. In a place where all they raise is cotton, southern Baptists and Methodists have invented a new sin. Liquor. <laughs> yes, I am a Methodist. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's listen to the Methodist. What have our elders done to make this country great? Can I sing a reply? Go ahead. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of felony, <laughs> of thee I sing. Witches and applied <laughs> whips to the Quakers' high. It's not oppression. We are great because we sing. Let freedom ring. Freedom. We are the freedom nation. We created freedom with the war for independence. We made freedom with the release of the slaves. But there is yet another freedom. The one who makes that will be the next Lincoln, the next Washington. I'm talking about freedom from the bottle. I didn't know bottles could be so bossy. My dad has a cobalt blue ink bottle. <laughs> well, proving such a flippity jibbit, how your father not have an understanding? Weren't we just talking about slavery? What about our being enslaved to men? <laughs> Where do the socialists gather? Where do the lawbreakers gather? Where do the moles and the bosses of our politics gather? Around really filthy things. Around alcohol. Yes, addictive beverages. You're not going to solve anything by prohibiting alcohol. Just look at the socialists, the, the New York German socialists. Why even block their way to the growler? Why don't you bring this up in New York City sometime? They'll run you out of town for what you're trying to do. I spot on a German beer saloon once while in New York City. On the wall, there was this disgusting picture of a beer-swizzling German who said, I'd rather have a big stomach for drinking than a big muscle for working. Oh. <laughs> and wall on the floor, the, amongst the den of some maiden screeching like a guinea hen, the <laughs> fattest of the German girls <laughs> with their low-neck dresses were getting plenty of partners. And they would go off in their shaking style, while on the dance floor, the merry half inebriated cu uh, couples would sweated, bumped, and thumped. It was all very vulgar. Is Morris going to tell stories all evening? Or are we going out for a little promenade with some ice cream? Ah, uh, we're coming, Hannah. We just had a hear out our old southern friend.
Morris. I'm so glad to have this time with you. Daddy! <coughs> Daddy, run. Run from my seat. I will, Daddy. I, I will. But one moment. And, and don't get so worked up about people's drinking. They enjoy the, the, their whiskey from time to time. Father, I, I want to do what you, as you did. Make our country better. No! I know that, okay. Daddy! Daddy! Help! Help me to a bed. He's getting worse. Daddy! Daddy! Daddy, do you have some words for me? I feel better. No. Daddy. It's not true. It's not true. you to lead as your father did. But politics? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Bankman. But as a wife of a former Texas congressman, I know what politics is. It's drunken promises, calumny, illicit compromise. Oh. I will not be in politics, Mother, but in morals. What about tariff questions? Like gold and silver? My main focus will be on liquor, not lucre. Morris, as your father's advisor, let me, let me tell you how to win this election. Write letters of appreciation. Depict the death of your father. Say you were with him. And, and stay out of sight. Frankly, you look too young. Let us handle the election. As a man of the club, who supports Morris in this election, I think that our candidate is a model for you. Mr. Banker, I want you to continue your valuable work. But I, and I will not appear among those who concern you, but I can appear to others. I know ministers like Reverend Smith here, who are looking for an outlet for their faith. I know good women who can persuade good husbands. A new issue can inspire new voters. Adding those who would prohibit carnal pleasures to your father's constituency might work. But in regards to your father's people, I must insist that you follow my advice. By the way, who's the turn is it? Oh, sorry, it's fine. I see it's Mr. Bankhead's turn. Talking to myself, I have always been the thing that came to play. Whoever burns wine, wipes his tongue, remains a fool his whole life long. Boys, Your problem boys. is, brother, is that people don't really care about people. Boys, Clifton, this is not the time. Mother, and gentlemen, please forgive me if I see it. But this sounds like something a Pharisee might do. Did not the Apostle Paul write the letter of Galatians to preserve a Christian liberty? Olga, Olga, stop your nitpicking. You know drunkards go to hell. But why did Paul urge Timothy to take wine from his stomach? Why does Proverbs urge to use a strong drink to in pain? Why does Isaiah pursue something like champagne in heaven? Olga, these words are simple. They have high use of strong medicine. The Bible in no way promotes a drink that would destroy the temple of the Holy Spirit. And what about Corinthians? At my church, I do not allow a narcotic poison to represent the blood of Jesus Christ. The more engaging Christianity can offer, let's interpret divine rhythm more figuratively. This is necessary, of course. We are a safe event. Bring on a new moment. Well, Morris, my son, have you received word from the telegraph office? Brother, I am your new congressman. <laughs> Critics think that you lack the education to stop Mr. Roosevelt. People think I have an edu meager education. They think I spell bird, B-U-R-D. But if B-U-R-D doesn't spell bird, then what the hell does it spell? Speaker Cannon, uh, there's a, a representative from Texas who wants to see you, uh, a Mr. Shepard. 
Send him in. It is an honor to meet you, Mr. Speaker. Nice to meet you, boy. Have a seat. I've been reading a little bit about your election in the Chicago Times. You seem like some sort of sheepdog that got in with the geese. Uh, I don't believe I understand what you mean, sir. No. You are the one who's taking this opportunity of having a house seat to campaign against the saloon. Yes, sir. Right? In fact, you're going to make this country so dry, you're going to have to prime a man to make him spit. <laughs> right? Where did, you get, where did you receive your apprenticeship? The University of Texas, then Yale College, where I received my law degree. Well, that's mighty prestigious. Hmm, well, that will make your, your, your crusade doubly effective. Were you with your pa when he died? Yes, I was, sir. He fell over in my arms. It was bright disease. He was in terrible pain. He had spasms of black, of puffiness, bloodletting. Young Morris, your father was a Democrat who opposed me on the tariff. And the money question. What was a help to us in the Spanish War? He was sensible. My father was a great man. A farmer who made it to the top. And you are going to go even further, ain't you? Mr. Morris, where did you get your remarkable idea? I converted at the University of Texas. But I thought it all out while I was at Yale. Someone has to lock horns with terror and error. Ardent spirits are creating a race of idiots. How can a society that condemns the criminal and isolates the insane tolerate the traffic that makes for these abominations? Sounds like you should be on the Ways and Means Committee. Well, the Judiciary. <laughs> Excellent. This is exactly what I was looking for. I knew that uh, the leaders of our Congress would be friends to mothers and children everywhere. Well, son, the only problem with this is uh, some of our best friends are brewers. Most members of Congress can buy from time to time. In fact, we sometimes say, Larry moved the House and Bourbon in the Senate. Your bill wouldn't do nothing to hurt our friends or stop our little customs, now would it? Sir, you have me all wrong. I want to eliminate alcohol forever. What is this drink it's but the liquid excretions of rotting matter? Well, in that case, I think I got an even better committee for you. The Committee for Chicken Shit! <laughs> Dang it! I don't want none of this tall foolery around here! You are not going to turn my comments into Sunday school! You stick to this liquor bill and I'll personally direct my friends to come up with another Texas Democrat who might do your people some good! Now get out of my office, show some gumption, come back when you can bring something to the table! Now remember, we need to come clean on the absence of results of alcohol. We'll still show that you care about the problems and the police and church members. Also, you need to show that you can speak with the bird about local issues. My friends, it is an honor to run the newly created 1st Congressional District of Texas. I assure you that the plan, uh, plans to improve our portion of the country are taking shape. We wish to tame the orgiastic Red River. This drunken st stream to our northern border needs dredging. We want a sober river, a straighter course, and an encouragement to commerce. We also want to erase from the the state of Texas, all the wild and inebriated animals that imbibe the lifeblood of our state. I have introduced a bill that will eradicate from our state the bull weevil, wolves, rattlesnakes, and all water moccasins from the great state of Texas. We also want sturdier, more inspiring buildings to attract settlers. We w I have started a commission that will tag and order the replacement of droopy public edifices and tipsy public establishments. Morris, I think going hunting with President Roosevelt is our greatest triumph yet. It will help us out like Speaker Cannon. What are you going to say when you pass the President's ear? Now remember, Speaker Cannon is going as well. But I have a great inward. I'm going to bring up the President's own crusade against alcohol as Police Commissioner of New York in the mid-1890s. Isn't it? Bucks are always hungry after the storm. They take a pretty straight path from bedding to feeding. You have picked a great day and a great place to come, Mr. President. Mr. Shepard, have you ever gone hunting? My uh, daddy was always pretty busy, and we had friends enough to supply our venison. I've always been more interested in another type of prey. What is that, Mr. Shepard? Uh, the saloon. 
You know, Mr. Shepard, we appreciate your support for the regulatory provisions of our square deal. And like you, Mr. President, I see something ultimate behind all our nation's problems. I, a base disease that, if cured, will be the remedy to all other problems. My, my, you bother the President with business. Mr. President, let us make our republic more sober. Let us make it more wise. Let us pass a prohibition amendment against alcohol. I'm sure that Mr. Cannon could set you on a committee to work for that prospect. Mr. President, I need your help. Ms. Speaker Cannon has been trying to foil my plans for the last five years and render my efforts ineffective. Mr. Morris, Shepard, you have been on a minority party in the Congress for five years. The President appreciates your votes, but we don't want to divert people from our business. Mr. Shepard, you confound my thinking somewhat. As police commissioner, I tried to, su to support Sabbath restrictions against alcohol because it was the law. I'm not a teetotaler, exactly. And if you want to talk about feudal struggle, try taking on the New York City bosses in Tammany Hall over the liquor question. You will find your agents fighting gangs of bereaved barflies. I will set my face like Flint and make this prediction that if you ever pass a law against alcohol, you will be sending good men to their graves. Bad news, Morris. A note here indicates that both the Republican and Democratic interests are funding your opponent this November. I think Speaker Cannon is trying to eliminate you. And now with the popular president turning you down, it seems that we've dead-ended. Oh, but there is someone even more powerful than the president. And I'm meeting with her this afternoon. Her? Yes. I'm meeting with this afternoon with Anna Gordon, the uh, national representative of the Women's Christians Temperance Union the largest organization of women in the world. How was your session? It went very well. Oh, why Alma? You know, I believe that you have done more for the advancement of righteousness than anyone. Oh, Morris, from the first primordial fall in men's bestial nature has been at war with his God. We try to do our part to blunt lascivious desire. Wow, well, you know I think it, the apple Eve gave to Adam was fermented. I do too. Ever since that momentous tragedy, we've had Roman orgies, drunken crusaders, and tipsy popes. We had the monstrous debacle, the discovery of Irish whiskey and German brandy, both in the 12th century. But today, we are inside of a day where we could Banish these cups of wrath forever. You mean the poison that kills every tissue? The toxin that destroys every organism. The drink that condemns babies yet unborn. The drink that produces degeneracy in mind and body. The drink that paralyzes the healing white corpuscles of the blood. The drink that creates a reeling and besotted mass of human wreckage. You know, men are often powerless to resist this vice. And what can we women really do? We have tried everything. What you need is a law, and I want to be your man. Now how are you going to start a law in the House of Speaker Cannon control and everything? I'm going to be elected to the Senate. You take that risk for little on me? I would die for you, and for your cause. Although I may Someday, marry a respectful lady. It will be you who I will always love. Well, good day, Mr. Cannon. What's so good about it? Well, haven't you heard how Georgia and Tennessee have gone dry since we last talked? Those only laws get the neighbors down, you know it. Mr. Cannon. Why are you abetting the de degradation of the American people? Well, you haven't got any bills passed as I'm a speaker, and you never will. I'm moving on to the Senate, and I'm going to win. You have nothing in Texas but a tiny northeast corner. I have the endorsements of the anti saloon League and the WCTU. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Cannon, I've sent the news to some of my friends in the WCTU that the 15th District of Illinois really doesn't need you anymore. Oh, so you have petticoats in politics? You're mad! Wait and see, Mr. Cannon. Okay. 
Morris, you have our blessing. Lucille Sanderson is a lovely woman, educated out east like you, a demure Christian, and full of social grace. Brother, let me touch up your hair a little. It seems... I will not go with any part of me wet, sister. I don't want to give Lucille the notion that I'm anything like Clifton. Clifton. He is a prime example of how a, a rum can demonize a young man. I'm sure. And I pray for him. I'm sure there's some way we can think of to sober up that swine. But thank God he's not here in Texarkana now to start any rumors that might bedevil my courtship. You give me the purest delight, and my heart palpitates towards you with the most virtuous affection. Where is your family? They thought they could leave us alone. For a tete a tete. <laughs> what is so bad about that? Mm. I would like to avoid the temptation toward intercorruption as much, as much as possible. I want to keep my will attuned like an alarm clock. Well, it should really be attuned now. You've been away from me again for four months. Has another woman come into your life? I swear to you, Lucille, Lucille, I did not direct a single erotic reverie to any other woman while I was in Washington. Of course, I do love all young ladies and mothers in the abstract, and I have assiduously courted the WCTU, and that is necessary for the furthering of our cause. Our cause? What about us in particular? Lucille, I've taken the liberty of getting approval from your parents of the man. I have an estate now worth around $400,000, with considerable properties both in Texarkana and in Austin. And I consider you the most wonderful woman in the world. Lucille? Be my ornament. No, Shepard. You are the most fixated young man I have ever met. You desire the social betterment of all. I do believe you need a lady in your life. Of a new amendment to the Constitution. 
for the newly elected Senator of Texas, Mr. Morris Shepard. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We know what the problem is. Today, alcoholized slaves are numerous enough to hold the balance of power in voting. Today, thousands of white women are held in a subjection that damns their bodies and their souls so that the liquor trade may thrive. This year, the loss of the nation's wealth due to alcohol-related incidents and crimes is no, uh, no less than $14 billion. But today, we have a petition that I will present to Congress to end all of that. With the powerful moral sway of the largest group of ladies in the world, the WCTU, and the political acumen of the Anti-Saloon League, we shall see three quarters of the nation's states adopt the prohibition of alcohol. We will, in this great victory, see our nation regenerate itself. We shall see man rising in final triumph over the serpent that was subtler than all the beasts of the field, again to be crowned with the approbation and confidence of Almighty God. Abomination. Now you and your WCTU gossip machine just pipe down. What's important is that Mr. Volstead is willing to help us. Morris? No, thank you. I quit coffee back in 96. I'm surprised, Senator, that you have not even had mineral water tonight. I, I prefer the taste of pure, clean water. With its transparent, pure, clean texture. Now, gentlemen, what do we have to look forward to in the struggle ahead? Our approach is practical. We open fire on the enemy. We'll go from congressman to congressman and senator to senator, warning them of vigorous advertisement campaigns in their district. What of our opposition? Well, in the House, where we were most worried, it is not as bad as before. Speaker Joe Cannon has been overturned and even defeated in his own district. I know this makes Mr. Shepard very happy because he was very much an adversary. But remember, there are other important enemies. Remember, as Shakespeare once said, "'Tis better to weigh your enemy more mighty than he seems." That is so true, Mr. Shepard. Indeed, who are we going to get to finance this campaign? You would be surprised, actually, who is funding the anti saloon League. Asa Candela from the Coca-Cola Company is a great contributor. Packard, B.F. Goodrich, and Cadillac also represent the motor industry to have sober drivers. Surprisingly enough, Theater owners, too, want to empty the saloons to bring them into their own establishments. To witness lewd behaviors of women and breezy, snappy boys, this is not the way we wanted the reform to work. What of it, if it serves our purpose? Then what are we going to do in Congress to make this a law? Well, first we need a simple amendment to outlaw the sale and manufacture of alcohol. I will write this. Wayne Wheeler here will create the Enabling Act that we will present to Congress after the bill is passed. This will give some teeth to our amendment and define our terms. Well, Andrew Volstead here, our Norwegian-born counterpart from Minnesota, will sponsor the bill. This is important in distracting foreign opposi opposition. Well, it must be a type. We do not want any uh, clauses that some could find unconstitutional. Now, Andrew, clauses will be necessary in the amendment to get the act we want passed. Then don't make them too thick. For instance, we will not outlaw the actual drinking of alcohol, only the sale and manufacture. We must not forget the good Midwesterners, like myself, who enjoy a little bit of homemade vibe. This is disgusting! And Hannah, we can, uh, we can go after the sale and manufacture first. Subsequent legislation can go after the consumption. I'll see to that. 
Due to the efforts of leaders like Texas Senator Morris Shepard, the Anti-Saloon League, and the Women's Christian Temperance Union, the states ratified the 18th Amendment to the United States Constitution on the 16th of January, 1919. The Volstead Act followed on the 28th of October, 1919. The reign of tears is over. The slums will only be a memory. We will turn our prisons into factories and our jails into storehouses and corn cribs. Men will walk up right now. The women will smile. The children will laugh. Hell will be forever rent. It is no surprise today that we have to have this presentation in our outside amphitheater. But not only is this the largest Sunday school in the world, but today we have our largest attendance ever, of over 6,000 I am told, to honor a very special fellow Texan. As pastor of First Baptist in Fort Worth, I would now like to turn your attention to the U.S. Congressman from Georgia's 5th District, the Honorable William David Upshaw. Yay! I love being dry. <laughs> Do you know that in the past two years, when this prohibition battle has been waged, that hundreds of Texans have named their babies after the man whose life we celebrate today? <laughs> Do you know that the Texas State Senate has this man slated to be the next president of the United States? Here is our hero of national prohibition, our victor, our champion, Senator Moore Shepard. Senator Shepard, you are comrade to the immortals. In the slow but upward reaching march for humanity, it has been yours in the good providence of God to take that inspiring position as leader in the front lines of the trenches. You, sir, have embraced the truth in unselfish love. You have, without apology, put the supreme emphasis on things that are supreme. You are from here in crown, Senator Shepard, not only by the millions of friends who love you, but by the children of your former opponents who will one day rise up to call you blessed. Is this Bible class going to worship God or our brother? Say, are you still awake? I am. It was nasty to make it home tonight. Ah, uh, Northeast Texas. May lack a single site to inspire a single tourist, but it'll still be home for me. I thought you might stick around with an imposter Norris in Fort Worth to collaborate on one of his upcoming sermons. Are our little girls okay? <laughs> I'm surprised you care. Well, I'm surprised that you didn't go down with the rest of my family to Fort Worth to witness the most, one of the most spectacular events in my life. Both Janice and Susan have a cold. I'm not going to miss them getting something worse. Say, darling, I really love what you've done for me. Not tonight, in any circumstances. Then what are you still awake for? Morris, how do you suck to realize that your amendment has put nearly 200,000 saloon owners in this nation out of work? What about the threats you've been receiving? And if you care, what about the threats we have been receiving? You? Yes, us. Does Amaziah Smith know about this? Oh, yes. He said something about notifying the police. But I don't see anyone. Lucille, this is Northeast Texas. We're the best of neighbors. Put your fears to rest. You're okay. You're fine. Everyone's fine. But the bomb destroyed the parlor downstairs. Extra, extra, read all about it. Father of Prohibition Attack, Bombers Part Friend of Morris Shepherd's House in Texarkana. Okay, Amaziah, who's next? Uh, Theodore Kirchhoff. Sitting from Clarksville is here to see you, sir. Very well. Send him in. Mr. Church, very nice to see you. I wish I could say the same. What's the problem? Since Prohibition, my saloon and brewery have been all closed. And I have not found another line of work. The Germans in Clarksville detest your law, and though the war has taken the heart out of us, some are still living in pain besides. Mr. Churchill, I would, I would prefer if you don't use the word German to describe your fellow citizens. I do, not, uh, I do not recognize such a term. If you may remember, Germans were the, our enemies in the recent war. 
as an American citizen, if I am indeed that, because I do not know yet whether I have freedom of speech, I beseech you, repeal your law. <laughs> My law? The, uh, the prohibition is in the United States Constitution. If you do not take action, my brother, my former editor of the Kronksville Zeitung and, uh, and others in our hierarchy fraternity believe we can turn Kronksville against you. Kronksville was never my uh, strong suit. As a congressman, my support came mainly from Texarkana, Paris, Sulphur Springs, Mount Pleasant, and I have friends in Pittsburgh. I'm, but Mr. Churchoff, I am a senator. Clarksville isn't something I even worry about. You make me so upset, you southern evangelicals, with your temperance laws. You, you reveal that you're such an immoral people, giving over to posing that you can only save yourself by forcible laws. Now wait. Nowhere else in the globe are there more drunks in the land of 100,000 temperance apostles. What did he want? I don't know. But he was a nut. Extra, extra, read all about it. 130 ounce steel found in the estate of Moore Shepherd, so called father prohibition, manufacturing moonshine on his own farm. Agents find seven barrels of mash and 300 gallons of whiskey, 400 gallons of whiskey, excuse me. Read all about it. Sister, brother, what, tell me what has been happening on our land. Brother, please don't be upset. The newsman from the Mount Pleasant Hustler got things way out of proportion. He was crazy enough about the still to send his article to the New York Times. I know, I read about it while I was in Washington. How did this still get on our land? He fired the overseer who did this. It was on our Naples family holdings in Morris County. He was obviously trying to make some political trouble for you. Where is the still now? It was seized by agents and is now on display the Mount First National Bank of Mount Pleasant. Display? Yes, it's definitely attracting some attention. Who hired this overseer? I did. You? Wait a second. What's that drink you have there? Boys. Ugh. Boys. It's wine. Where'd you get this? There's uh. no, nothing in the Constitution that says I can't have a little wine. Uh. If I was a Hercules of the air, I would throw you farther boys. than Haley's Comet. Just try tossing me across the room, big boy. Oh, uh, boys. You are on the brink of making the most mobile, uh, noble undertaking in history to be undermined. You are on the brink of making me mad. Oh, boy. You boys. someone who served his country so faithfully since 1903. Well, don't forget, I got voted out in 1911 and 1915, and I don't know if you know this or not, but this is going to be my last year in Washington. Okay. Well, if you're wondering why a congressman from Manhattan in New York City is visiting old Barnyard Joe, maybe it's because we have something in common. You're not a Republican, are you? No, but I'm a wet. And I share certain misgivings with a certain senator from Texas who needs to eat a little humble pie. More Shepherd. You know, you are smart. Wheeler, Volstead, Upshaw, the WCTU, they don't count for nothing anymore. They were fads. Shepherd, the man from the Texas Cotton Patch, is the true father of prohibition. And if you darken his image, we'll be a whole lot closer to bringing back our lager. He is vulnerable. Did you hear about that still on his farm? <laughs> I see him as the biggest hypocrite of the age. My constituents have had enough of his baloney! Oh, he's not a hypocrite. The man believes the stuff. Shepard continues to give speeches on the wonders of prohibition. I don't think for a second that stealing his farm was something he had anything to do with. The man's a regular egghead. He don't know a dang thing about farming. Thank 
Thank you. Yes, please. Really, Lucille, I am surprised you are serving me tea. I wouldn't have thanked my brother Morris would have allowed such a thing. Who knows what tea could do if you really examine it? I could start acting foolish. The man is never around. Father in Washington, he is constantly in his library at the office. I'm trying to save the alcohol. He has become a workaholic. <sighs> Did you mention my concern to him? How it would be nice to forgive Clifton? We don't understand, Olga. He is constantly busy. He wants to control everything. If I talk to him about his daughters, he gives me this vague look as if I'm talking about humanity. This is now the 10th annual speech I have given in praise of the 18th Amendment. Though there are many social gutter pups and buttercups who would decry the loss of heathen activities, I say today that millions of paychecks are going every Saturday to mother and child instead of the saloon. It is estimated by leading economist Roger, uh, Roger Babson that productivity in the United States has risen 30% because of prohibition. We are here today at the height of prohibition glory. One fifth of the world's assets are held by American pockets, in American bank vaults, and enclosed by American fences. A final word to those who would engage in warfare with our Constitution. We have eliminated the bartender. The bootlegger will be next. Our opponents warn us that the 18th Amendment will be repealed. But I say to them that there is much a chance that the 18th Amendment will be repealed as a hummingbird flying to Mars with the Washington Monument at its tail. Extra, extra, stock market crashes second time, investors lose billions. Extra, extra, economists say ec no economic recovery in sight. Nation has rock bottom for three consecutive years. Yeah, put me through to Carl. Hi, Carl, this is Sol. That's right, you're congressman. Say, Carl, I want you to spin this story a little bit. Do you know about Congress's decision to pass an amendment that would destroy prohibition? I realize that this is the New York Times. Yeah, but look, everyone needs a joke every once in a while. And if we're going to win, we're going to have to go on the attack. Carl, just remember all the things that I've done for you. I'm not going to tell you anything that isn't true. Now pick up a pencil and I want you to quote the following, all right? Got a pencil? Good. Quote, Hummingbird and Washington Monument cited Dash, making their way to Mars, exclamation mark, unquote. <laughs> Isn't that funny? of anyone eating too much pie and murdering their family? Or does anyone overdose on potatoes and drive their vehicle headlong into children playing hopscotch on the street? My friends, alcohol is a useless, pernicious, poisonous intoxicant that erodes Body and soul. <sighs> Morris Shepard is crazy, and he's going delirious. Hopefully he'll drop dead just any minute. <laughs> but the really good news is that Senate Majority Leader Joe Robinson says that no one's going to second the filibuster. After Shepard croaks, 
This amendment to destroy prohibition is surely going to go out to the states. It wearies the brain first and then begins its work of paralysis. It is indeed a pleasure that you, my fellow senator from Texas, have come to wish me adieu on my departure. I have tried to explain to Morris' madness. He is going around that Ford truck outside 5,000 miles and cover 50 Texas towns. All just to keep Texas from voting down prohibition. Even if he succeeds, the cause will probably lose nationally. Now, Lucille, let's not lose heart. The fall of prohibition is showing us the set. Yes, but we never get to see you, Daddy. It was our first chance for a normal summer vacation, and you're squandering it on a motor ride that'll probably take the life out of you. Whoa, darlings. You know the repeal of prohibition will poison the soul of America. Beverage alcohol is a menace to human rights. And why don't you come with us, Senator? I'm coming from Morris and the other end of things. Getting relief from our Texas cotton farmers. The new Roosevelt team owes us a lot for all the southern sport we've delivered. It hurts me personally to think that Prohibition could be repealed. You know about what that Jewish congressman was saying about you? Who? Why well, Saul Bloom, the music man, got into politics in the rich sixth district of the country. It's mad dab in Manhattan. He said you were the little shepherd who tried to bring in that king of Khan. He says you were losing all your sheep. Even Georgia and Tennessee, it seems, are coming back to the new amendment. Tom, I know him. Don't tell me he wasn't backed by bootleggers. Anyway, darlings, duty calls. Oh, and Tom, I trust that you'll stay, at least till you're trained to wake up, for enjoy a little bit of hospitality from Lucille and Janet. Oh, I was hoping a little bit she might have some of a marvelous comp pie around. Mom, we're having a card party at Lucille's. Oh, I need to go. Your husband sure is a go-getter. Um, I enjoy being with a man who has power and who wants to do good things. But Morris is a man who never stops. This is a repeal of prohibition. Just look at what's happening to the punch of the That's some rum to the punch. It's like African tribes been going on. the clout New York City has gained in obtaining New Deal policies for itself. <laughs> I'd like to give you a um, ham sandwich. <laughs> Touche! <laughs> I guess, I guess uh, a good Southern Evangelical is not going to touch my cocktail that other, any, then a good Jewish boy like me is going to eat a ham sandwich. But I would like to ask you a question. What do you think about the return of booze? How does it feel knowing you've devoted your entire life to a losing cause? Liberty must be defined in humane terms, and our liberty-loving country will never be truly free until prohibition returns. You hypocrite! Do you know that crime is running rampant in New York City? Gangsters are killing everything. Does that make you happy? No. Do you know that some bastards in the government were purposely poisoned? Industrial alcohol, the stuff denaturing process that citizens were doing to get alcohol, and that hundreds died in my boroughs of Manhattan and Harlem? That makes government officials that supported this practice something like murders! Do you know what I'm talking about? What your alcohol needs is another torpedo from the good ship constitution. That will never happen again, Senator! What you don't understand is that prohibition is worthy to die for. It will, its objective is to sweep from the path of every life the 
influence that would debauch and degrade something like this so-called function. Hey, Messiah, let's go. Certainly, is only like ice. It'll thaw. Someday he'll live to regret his whole life. I got, I got an idea. Hey, everyone! I'd like to propose a toast to the death of prohibition! <laughs> faith in you or our relationship, Bioma. And you're still, I see, that strong man who first attracted me when I first laid eyes on you 27 years ago. I've been in Washington even longer than that, being elected by my fellow Texans for 37 straight years now, a record even in Texas. You're such a dynamic man. Could you do me a favor? Of course, my love. I would do anything for you. I'd die for you. Break your ties with the Democrats. Run as the presidential candidate for the Prohibition Party this November. Wyoma, I can't. I can't do that. Why not? The Prohibition Party has no power, Wyoma. The Democrats do. I'm better where I am. Great, so you can campaign for the unreformed New York City wet Al Smith in 1928. And then, for the New Deal, the expansion of the government, and even bucking against your colleagues in Texas, Roosevelt's court-packing scheme. You can go on supporting a president who has four alcoholics as sons. Now, the expansion of government is not a bad thing, Wyoma. I foresee a day when go a stronger government can enforce prohibition, make it a legal crime to speed in an automobile, to prohibit tobacco, coffee, and other products lined with fat like butter. You fool. You came at a moment when the government could have changed the people for the better. But now, you're letting the unreformed people make one demand after another on the government. I'm not! This government is going to turn into a vending machine and go bankrupt. What do you think about that, Mr. Big Spending Democrat? Ah! Morris, it is so good of you to come take lunch with us, even while serving as chair of the Committee of Military Affairs. Olga, Clifton. Have a nice cool glass of water. We ordered it for you. It's good to have you in the capital. How are the sights? Oh, I remember when Father took me here 40 years ago. Morris, your city has really become a gleaming white showcase of America. Oh, that wasn't me. But someone has really learned to sandblast the old marble? Yes. And I believe I've gone under a little renovation myself. You look very tired. I'm sorry what I said about you 20 years ago. And I'm sorry I haven't had much time to ride or come see you in that time. I, I may have been in Washington for over 40 years now, but I guess I'm enough of a Bible-toting uh, Texan to ask for your forgiveness. Well, I do, Morris. Give me too. Clifton. <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, we'll die forgotten. True son of Northeast Texas.
Lucille, I love you. I want you to be my wife. Oh, Tom, you are wonderful. My answer's yes. Well, I have to wait at least half a year. You know, just so people don't get ideas. That was my thinking as well. And of course, I want you to be buried someday with Morris, just as I need to be buried with my Louise. Perhaps, and I don't want to sound dictating here, but perhaps you'd also like to do something for your late husband's legacy. We'd have a, a statue of him built in Texcana, a college named after him, a hospital. Actually, I was thinking just a dam would be enough. What do you mean? I don't want a statue for my late husband, nor a college. I want to dredge out of my head all thoughts about first marriage. Um, I wanted to be an idealist when I married him, but I was so young. Morris was so wrapped up in his own projects, particularly prohibition. He wanted to control everything. He wanted to control me and the kids. Do you know what General MacArthur said about the cause of his death? No. Overwork, as chair of the Committee on Military Affairs. MacArthur said that Morris has become the first American casualty of this Second Great War. Well, he was faithful, wasn't he? He was faithful to his cause. So faithful that he seemed to think it was sinful just to be a husband or a father. Frankly, I don't give a damn if his name is forgotten. 